What's up guys, my name is Dan Danier Daniel. I draw cars, I turn them into 3D prints using QForge. Today we're gonna to talk about color aware and how you can get more color accurate images using QForge and using this different mode. Um, in a few weeks, Color Match is gonna be coming to all users, personal users and commercial. Commercial, you have beta access right now, but it will be officially released sometime soon. Um, but for now, for the personal users, the only way that you can really get color accurate images is color aware, so this is where this video is gonna come in handy. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I hope you learned something. I kinda wanna take a step back and act as if we're a brand new person to Hue Forge. Um, a little bit daunting, we have this grayscale image on the left. This is the actual Hue Forge. You can see the, um, the 3D print and how it is built up. Um, if we turn on wireframe, this is how your 3D mesh looks. Hue Forge is looking at your image in standard mode. Right now we're in combo. In standard mode with this like black and white filter. So it creates highs and lows based on your whites and blacks, your darkest areas. So if I was new to Hue Forge and I wanted to approach this image, let's say I didn't know color aware was a thing. My first thought is, okay, I see in the actual image, I see green, I see orange, brown, and some skin tones, right? So if we bring in an orange, let's just grab a yellow. Let's grab, I think I have a brown color, a skin color, and we need a good green. Fine green's not what I want. Let's do this blue green, and we will also use Chrominal Serpent Green. So if I'm a new user, the way that I'm going to approach this is I'm just going to start playing with sliders with different filaments and the colors that I see. So if we start bringing up our colors into this, you can kind of notice that we're getting a few problematic areas um, as we build up this mesh. So like I said, Hue Forge is going to look at your image with like this black and white filter and standard. So if we reorder our sliders, just make it a little bit cleaner, we can see that it's not necessarily grabbing this. It's not matching it up to like our skin tone. It's not really matching it up to our yellow or our brown either. It's it's matching it up to that green area. Um, just because green's such a darker color, we can kind of play around with it. Get it a little bit closer as we move our sliders up and down and just kind of play with it. But you can see we're not getting the color separation that we would want out of this kind of an image. So to accomplish the desired results, which would be just copying this image and turning this into a 3D print, um, we have color aware. So color aware, there are a few things that you can notice when we came over to color aware. The first thing is in the center, we now have these blue, red, and green, I'll call it buckets. These buckets are where Hue Forge is looking at your image. It's looking at your blue scale of the image, your red and your green scale areas of this image. Basically what's happening is in Hue Forge, it's creating three different meshes and stacking them together. So all of your blue colors within an image, all of your red colors within an image, and all of your green colors within an image, within the image, um, it's creating three hue forges and stacking those together. So with that in mind, in this particular image, we don't really have any blue. Um, we don't have really any any blue color space type colors. All we have are these green areas and these yellows and browns, so that would be in your red color space. So whenever you're gonna start approaching this image, we want as much space as possible for just our red and our green areas. We don't want this blue at all. It's just kind of wasted space in our 3D mesh. Uh, so the way that we can compress the blue zone and really only work with green and red zones is you come down to your CA presets. Your CA presets are different ways that you can set up your buckets, for lack of a better term. So for this, we'll set it up to where the red color space will be on the bottom print and then the green color space will be the top print. So that means that 
the the actual cat in the picture um, will be on the bottom and then the green mountains in the background will be more towards the top so the 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 line will be sunken into the hue forge since we have these two color spaces you can see at the top we've got this blue color space completely compressed because like i said we don't have any blue in this image um, when you're in color aware it's a good idea just to bring your tolerance all the way down to zero you don't really need to mess with this at least for this example for this there is quite a bit of detail so considering all of the little like the whiskers and just the small details and bark and everything if you come up here to your layer heights instead of a 0.08 which is default in hue forge you can bring your layer heights down to a 0.04 and you can see in the center core all of these little boxes they represent your layers so as we changed it Right now we're at 0.04, so you can see all the little boxes. If we go up to 0.08, notice how it, um, you know, uses half of the boxes. So that is representing each layer of filament that's going to be printed. Um, so obviously, if we go down to 0.04 layer heights, we'll have twice as many, twice as many layers to print. Okay, so we changed our layer heights from 0.08 to 0.04 to get a little bit more detail out of our prints. You can do a 0.04 layer height on a 0.4 nozzle. So the next thing that we will look at is, let's look at um, our min depth and our max depth. So considering we took out a lot of space, there's a lot of empty space that we aren't gonna need to print because we're at a 0.04 layer height, so we can actually thin this up. So. To make the overall hue forge thinner, you're going to play with your min depth and your max depth. So for this image, uh, in increments of 0.04, we'll just half the min depth. And we will bring the max depth down to 2. And then we can start working on getting the cat to look like it needs to. And we'll get the background looking like it needs to. So for the red color space... We'll bring black down so that we can start seeing a little bit more of that detail that um, we want out of this image. Um, I have this low TD brown. It's 0.8 TD, so it's pretty much opaque. For this example, I'm going to use chrominal chestnut brown. This is a specialized filament from Hue Forge. It's on the website. You really are going to have a hard time finding specific colors in the higher TDs, brown being one of them. 4 isn't really a high TD by any means, it, but it is a very versatile um, TD. So that's why we'll use it here so that you can get a little bit more blending. That already looks a little bit better. We'll bring these up to the green color space so that we can kind of focus down low. So I'm looking at the paw area of the image, and I'm trying to match that up as best as I can right now. Um, we'll go ahead and bring in a red filament just to kind of see what that can do for our image. I've got this Creality Hyper Red to bring in. I'll get rid of that green. So you can see with, it's using this like skin tone, um, from Esun. It's using this, uh, the blend from red to yellow. Um, it's not quite orange, like what we have in the picture. So let's go ahead and grab, Polymaker has a polychroma translucent, transparent, I forget which one it is, um, but their yellow is a 9TD. I also have a 10TD from HP3D, whichever one you have, just as long as it's a higher TD to blend the colors to make orange. So if we bring this in, you can see we start to get that uh, orange effect. This is a little bit much as far as orange, so we can just bring the red down just a hair. And then let's go ahead and bring in a white. So when you're in color aware, you can see in the buckets, we have a black down here at the bottom and a white here, and then all of your red color space in between. Remember, these are two hue forges stacked together. So you want to start with a black and work your way to either a white or just a lighter color. And then you'll have to rebase your Hue Forge for the second one on top or the third one if you have blue. 
So let's go ahead and reorder sliders so that we can see it a little bit better. Um, I'm just going to grab the black that we already have in this picture. We'll replace the orange. Um, let me grab another white. I'll actually put it here. And then I'll grab a black, put it over here. We'll bring this up into the green color space. So, trying to get it pretty close with the colors that we have already. The black's a little bit strong, so I think that the brown looks a little bit better for the bark. This is the kind of areas that I'm looking at trying to match these up um, with the image. If I bring black up too much, you can see it kind of just makes it all very shadowy. And I kind of like the the effect that we're getting on the actual cat itself. Reorder sliders. Keep white where it's at. Um, let's see. So let's grab, instead of this really dark green, it doesn't look bad just because we have this, um, this 3.5 yellow, this lemon yellow from Bamboo. So it's really helping the, the background. It's help it's helping light up this um, serpent green. This is also a chromonal filament because you can't really find a dark green in a higher TD. Eight is definitely a high TD filament, um, but it's very challenging to find, you know, dark green in just a higher TD. So that's why chromonal was kind of developed. Um, but if we use like a trying to think of a color that would be more more available to the general public let's try forest green just because it matches up with the picture pretty well so if we just bring this up we can probably get rid of the yellow yeah and we already get a really good background with this if i bring up the black areas you can start to see what kind of blending we're getting in the background. Let's bring this black up just a tad. You just keep playing with it until you figure out where exactly you want your colors to be. But you can see if we turn on, we have wireframe turned on. Let's actually turn it off so you can get a better view of what's going on. So we bring up this yellow, bring up this red. I kind of really enjoy the, the way this looks. Like, I think this looks really cool. So if we turn on wireframe, turn it back on, you can see where the separation is happening between your red color space and your green color space. You can see this cliff that is going to translate to the print. Um, it will actually, you'll feel the depth and the feel of that. Um, so if that's something you're after, this is very cool for that. Um, but this kind of just shows you with wireframe on how the mesh is, is going to look in the end when it's printed. And like I said, this is a project that's in your folder. Whenever you open your projects folder, you'll actually have color aware test the HueForge profile or the HueForge, um, project. You can actually just drag this in. And it'll show you, we'll just discard this. It'll show you what's been done before. Um, just to kind of give you an example of how to set up your meshes for Colorware. Um, there's a bunch of different, a bunch of different projects in the project folder for you to kind of look over and to see. As long as you bring in the actual project folder, it'll show you how somebody has previously set up the mesh um, and then you can also bring in just the image that comes with it and then you can try to practice with the images that are that are given to you if that's something that you're interested in we have a couple more things that i want to go over in color aware specifically we have these this red green and blue slider here what's happening when you're adding or subtracting to these is it's actually adding or subtracting like a, a, a tint of these colors over it. So like if there's an area that is basically white 
and you want it in the red color space or you want it in the green color space or the blue color space, whatever the case may be, you can actually turn these up and it's adding a transparent layer. Think of like a, a an image editor. It's just adding a layer of transparent, whichever color you choose over the top of the image. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is spike removal. Spike removal is super important. Um, you can kind of see, let's turn off wireframe for this. If we click none, there are these little little spikes that you'll get in your hue forges, um, especially with JPEGs. Specifically, PNGs are a little bit better. These do translate to prints, and they can kind of look janky whenever you print them out. So we call these spikes, and you can use spike removal to cut it down, um, almost cutting off like a layer. And you can see it just continues to get better and better as we cut it down. Um, there are diminishing returns as you get more aggressive with it. So it's up to you. Um, you know, it varies project to project on how you might want to use that. I think that is all that I have for today and all that I have for Colorware. If you have any questions over on the YouTube, feel free to drop them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. I also do these presentations over on Polymakers Discord every Friday night, 7 p.m. CST. So feel free to come over and join live. Um, I answer questions, go over different projects, help you with your projects that maybe you're struggling with, and I'll see you in the next video.